Hello, and welcome to Over the Garden Fence. My name is Helen Willoughby Peck, and I'm a University of California Master Gardener from Mariposa County, located in the Central Sierra foothills of California. For those of you that don't know what Master Gardeners do, we are university-trained volunteers that provide research-based information and education to local home gardeners on general horticultural practices, uh, sustainable landscaping, pest management, and in general just trying to help people solve problems that might come up in their garden. Today we're starting a whole new series called How to Propagate and Care for Your California Natives. This project is going to go over the different ways that we propagate native plants, including stem cuttings, division, seed germination, and also how to break the dormancy that is so common in uh, the seeds of California natives which prevents them from germinating successfully. So this project will probably take the better part of a year because each variety of native plant has its own requirements for the time of year that's best appropriate for successful germination. So let's go see what's in the garden. Romnia coulteri, or Matillaha poppy, is a flowering perennial shrub in the poppy family that grows between three and eight feet tall. It's valued for its large, showy, crepe-like flowers that have a cluster of many yellow stamens in the middle, giving it a fried egg appearance, and thus it's sometimes referred to as the fried egg plant. It bears the largest flowers of any California native, measuring four or more inches across. It's native to Southern California and Baja California, where it grows in dry canyons and coastal sage scrub, and it's a valuable food source for bees, butterflies, and moths. When grown in the home garden, it requires full sun, sandy or gravelly soil, and no irrigation once it's established. It grows in sunset zones 4 through 24, except 13. It's a little tricky to propagate, so let's go see what the best ways are to do it. The fruit of the Matillaha poppy are these spiny pods that not, under normal circumstances contain hundreds of little tiny seeds. However, a few weeks ago we had a major windstorm come through that took off roofs and took down trees and of course blew a lot of our seeds away. But I've looked close and I think we're going to get enough at least for propagation purposes. It's as simple as breaking the pod off the stem and you can see into the fins and even see into the capsule there where there are some seeds. And it's as easy as just shaking them out. And then we have our seeds. Many years ago, I attempted to propagate Matillaha poppies using stem cuttings and seeds. However, I could never get it to work until I realized that you can't propagate Matillaha poppies using stem cuttings, but you can with seeds if you use the right techniques. So Matillaha poppies are considered to be fire followers. Seeds from plants that are fire followers won't germinate unless they've been exposed to fire or smoke. This is pretty common to plants that are native to areas that experience frequent fires. In the case of the Matillaha poppy, it's the smoke that causes a chemical reaction and allows the seed to break dormancy and then germinate. There's a couple of ways to do that at home, so let's take a look. So what we're going to do is try to smoke these seeds so that we break their dormancy. You want to use a pot that isn't going to be damaged by smoke or fire. And in this case, I'm using a terracotta pot because I don't think it's going to get hot enough to crack it. You want to make sure you have a good drainage hole in the bottom, but you can also use tins like a uh, baking a pie pan or those metal containers that frozen food like lasagna comes in. You just need to punch a bunch of holes in the bottom. You want to use soil that preferably has a little bit of sand or maybe a little bit of gravel or even your native soil in it. However, I've successfully started Matillaha seeds just in regular potting mix. So the seeds are really tiny and so we're just going to sprinkle them on top and press them down because they don't need to be covered at all. They just need to make good contact with the soil. So what you want to start the fire with is some kind of organic flammable material. Uh, a lot of people recommend using pine straw or pine needles, but I'm not fussy about the leaves that I use. I mostly use oak because that's what I have around here. And then I also put some uh, shredded newspaper on top because the newspaper is quicker to light and the leaves are a little slower to, to burn. 
You want to have a little extra on hand because the fire is going to go out and you want to smoke this hopefully for between 10 and 15 minutes, maybe even 20. So you're going to make a big mess here, squeeze it down. And then you want to have something that you're going to put over it, not completely, but enough to let air in but not have a full-blown fire. You just want it to smolder so it gets as much smoke going as possible for as long as possible. So here we go. I should point out that you don't want to do this on a windy day. It's a little windy today, but it's not bad. And you don't want to use any kind of accelerant. Like, don't get a brilliant idea, like using your barbecue fuel to start it. It'll start just fine on its own. So we've let this smolder for about 15 minutes, and so I think it's about ready. Uh, we're just gonna water it in. We'll leave the ashes on top. And what we've done here is called scarification. We're scarring the seeds with the fire. And once we water it in, we're gonna put it out in the garden to overwinter. It's best to start these seeds like this in the fall and then give them several months in the cold winter garden, which will additionally add to the breaking of the dormancy of the seeds, and that is called stratification. There's an even easier way to start your seeds with smoke treatment, and that's using something called liquid smoke, which is usually used to season food. Uh, it sounds kind of crazy, but I've actually made it work. So you just take a little liquid smoke and dilute it with water and pour it over your seeds and then treat them exactly the same by putting them out in the garden and letting them overwinter for a few months. You do want to be sure that you're using true liquid smoke that's been distilled, not some chemical version of it. So this is natural liquid smoke. It's amazing how it works and it's probably the easiest way to go. Matilaha poppies are very temperamental when it comes to planting and often die soon afterwards. So you must be very careful to disturb the roots as little as possible. And the smaller the plant, the better success you will have in planting them. But once the Matilahas have become established, they can become quite invasive. They spread underground from rhizomes and come up all over your garden, and of course usually where you don't want them, in rock cracks and right up the middle of other plants. For years I've had a bed of Matilla poppies here, but last summer I tore them out and dug out their roots because the plants had become too woody and rangy. However, as you can see, they've made a comeback, despite my best efforts to eradicate them. But this makes for a good opportunity to propagate them by digging them up. And again, digging up only the smallest plants will have the potential for successful transplanting. Mature plants have no chance of surviving transplanting. We've had about a 30% success rate when digging up very young volunteers and potting them up into one gallon pots. Dig down deeply and well under and around the roots and rhizomes, disturbing them as little as possible. Transplant using potting mix that is not too rich and preferably with some sand or gravel. And then allow them to establish themselves for a few months before planting into a permanent location. Calscape says this should be done in the winter, but we've done it at various times of the year with success as long as the plants were very small. For best results, plant matillahas in the fall when temperatures have cooled and the soil is still warm. Water them occasionally over the first summer until they are mature and then stop all irrigation. I hope this video will help you successfully propagate and grow these beautiful matillaha poppies.